All right, let's do this. Today, we're going to try something, well, a little ambitious. We're talking about all of physics. Yep, the whole shebang. The rules for the entire universe, from apples falling from trees all the way down to the atoms that make up those apples. It's going to be a fast ride, so buckle up. Okay, let's start with the basics. Right now, you're on a rock. And that rock? It's just floating in the middle of this vast, empty space. And get this, it's not even the only rock. It's surrounded by more rocks, big ones, small ones, giant balls of gas, all of them just kind of moving around in this huge cosmic dance. So you got to ask, right? What the heck is actually going on here? Well, that's what physics is for. It's basically the instruction manual for reality itself. And to even begin to read that manual, we have to go way back. We have to start with the guy who basically wrote the first chapter, the original gravity guy. Isaac Newton. Okay, his most famous contribution is probably this little equation right here. But don't let its size fool you. It is incredibly powerful. What it's really saying is, if you know the forces acting on something, say a basketball, you can predict exactly where it's going to go. 100% certainty. To Newton, the universe wasn't random. It was like a giant, predictable machine. So that apple falling from the tree, what's the force? It's gravity. And Newton's big idea was that every object with stuff, with mass, pulls on every other object. The more stuff you have, the stronger the pull. But, and this is key, the farther apart you get, that pull gets weaker. And not just a little weaker, a lot weaker. Really, really fast. And that is the secret to orbits. You see, the Earth is constantly being pulled by the sun's gravity. It's basically falling towards it. But it's also moving sideways so fast that it just keeps missing. It's in this beautiful, endless state of falling around the sun, a perpetual freefall. This whole idea brings up something people mix up all the time, mass versus weight. See, your mass is just how much stuff you're made of. That number doesn't change, whether you're on Earth or Mars. Your weight, though, that's just the force of gravity yanking on all that stuff, which means, hey, you're not overweight. You're just on the wrong planet. But look, Newton's laws were amazing, but they were just the start. The story gets way more interesting when we start to look past the forces we can see and into the hidden world of energy. Let's use an example you might know all too well. When you're just holding your phone, it has stored energy. We call it potential energy. The second you drop it, that potential energy starts turning into kinetic energy, the energy of motion. And when it finally hits the ground, well, that energy has to go somewhere, right? And boom, right into your screen. And this all follows some really strict rules, the laws of thermodynamics. First, you can't create or destroy energy. You can only change its form. Second, temperature, that's really just a measure of how much the atoms in something are wiggling around. And the big one, entropy. That's just a fancy word for disorder. And the universe is on a one-way trip to more and more of it. Things are always, always getting messier. All right, now let's talk about a different kind of hidden force. For a long time, we thought electricity and magnetism were totally separate. But it turns out they're like two sides of the same coin. They're linked. If you get an electric field moving, you create a magnetic field. And if you get a magnetic field moving, you create an electric field. You see what's happening here? It's this endless chain reaction. One creates the other, which creates the first one again. And this whole thing just radiates outwards as a wave, an electromagnetic wave. And guess what we call the tiny part of that wave that our eyes can actually see? Light. The rest of it? Well, that's your radio, your microwaves, your Wi-Fi. So for a while there, it really seems like we had it all figured out. But the closer we looked, especially at weird things like the speed of light, the more the cracks started to show in this nice, neat picture. And then this guy showed up, Albert Einstein. And he didn't just add a new chapter to the rule book. He basically took the whole thing, threw it in the trash, and started over. Yeah, this pretty much sums up his vibe. He just kind of walked onto the scene, looked at Newton's perfect clockwork universe, and was like, nah, screw that. Everything you think you know is wrong. And his ideas, they were mind-bending. It all started from one simple, weird fact. The speed of light is the same for everyone, no matter how fast you're moving. And if that's true... The only way the math works out is if time itself is flexible. It can slow down, it can speed up. Oh, and gravity? It's not a force pulling things. It's the actual fabric of space and time. Space-time being warped and curved by massive objects. We're not being pulled toward the Earth. We're just following the straightest possible path through a curved space. And then, of course, there's this. Maybe the most famous equation in history. 
What does it mean? It means mass and energy are the same thing. They're just different forms of each other. You can convert a tiny, tiny bit of mass into a truly enormous amount of energy. But here's the crazy part. In solving one puzzle, Einstein accidentally opened a door to a reality that was even stranger. You thought relativity was weird? Ha, welcome to the quantum world. A place where the rules don't just seem weird, they seem completely impossible. So down at the scale of tiny little things like atoms and electrons, reality just gets fuzzy. Energy isn't a smooth, flowing river. It comes in these tiny, discrete packets called quanta. And particles, they don't have one single location. They exist in this cloud of possibilities. They can be in multiple places at once, a state we call superposition. Nothing shows how bizarre this is better than the famous double-slit experiment. Scientists fired a single particle, just one at a time, at a screen with two slits in it. But the pattern that showed up on the wall behind it looked like waves had been interfering with each other. Which led to a really, really weird question. Yeah, the only answer that makes any sense is that the particle interfered with itself. It acted like a wave, went through both slits at the same time, and then interfered on the other side. Think about that for a second. Okay, but if your brain isn't broken yet, this next part will do it. The moment you put a detector at the slits to try and see which one the particle actually goes through, the whole game changes. The interference pattern just disappears. The particle goes back to acting like a normal boring little ball. The very act of observing it, looking at it, changes the outcome. Reality itself seems to depend on whether or not we're watching. So, where does all this leave us? I mean, we've gone from a universe that runs like a perfectly predictable clock to one that seems to operate on pure probability, randomness, and the weirdness of just being looked at. We went from Newton's clockwork planets to Einstein's bending spacetime, all the way down to these fuzzy quantum clouds of possibility. It seems like every time we think we've finally got the rulebook figured out, the universe just flips the page to a chapter that's even stranger. So the real question is, are we done breaking the rules, or is there another, even weirder layer just waiting for us to find it?